Hello YouTube, thank you for clicking through. You're about to watch an informative new video from XYZ Print, but before you do, 01206 7 47 or hello at xyz.co.uk. They're the two best ways for you to get in contact with us about your next project. If you need a print quote, if you need any help or advice preparing your artwork, ping us an email or give us a call. We'll be happy to help you transform your ideas into print. And now, here's the video you've been looking forward to watching. Welcome to the definitive guide on zine printing. Oh, this is going to be a good one. So Wikipedia says, a zine is a special interest. Hold on. What is this? Welcome to XYZ. We're not going to tell you what a zine is. We're not going to give you a creative roadblock. We are zine printers. There are no conventions. I mean, who comes to work dressed in this jumper? We want to get across that when you print a zine with XYZ, the answer is yes. Now, what is the question? Can you print bespoke sizes? Yes. Can you send me a sample pack to help choose my papers? Yes. Is printing in black cheaper than full colour? Yes. Do you ship to the States? Yes. Can you print me one copy as a test before we go ahead with the final print run? Yes. Can you print me 38 copies because on your website it only says 50? Yes, we can. And we're going to go full on Greta Thunberg with this. If you only need 38, we'll print 38 and save some paper. If you need 111, we can print that as well. Final question, is printing and binding my zine at XYZ easier than it is on the college photocopier? Absolutely, but you knew that already, right? What we really wanna try and get across is that there are very few constraints and we'll do everything to print your zine exactly as you imagined it. The only restrictions we'll highlight are down to physical impossibilities. We have been printing zines for 14 years, so we know a little bit about what works and what doesn't and we'll do our best to flag up the winning combinations and eye-catching solutions. In the comprehensive video guide, we're gonna take you through the options that you have for binding, number of pages, sizes, and paper choices. This section really highlights the options you have available and what can be achieved in print. We'll then dive deep into loads of previous scenes we've printed, showcase what really works and what options might suit your next scene. Do also spend a little bit of time in our online portfolio, where I think we're up to a couple of hundred case studies now. Real work, not made up photos of imaginary zines and what they might look like. And then get inspired and see what can be produced. A lot of the examples we'll talk about in this video guide are on there too, so if there's a spec that you like, take a note of it and ping it to us on our quote form or send us an email direct. Ultimately, printing isn't a daunting experience. I mean, you've done the hard work and come up with a cool creative idea for your zine. Getting it into print is the easy part. So, without further ado, let's get started. We love zines. The smell and feel of them fresh off the press, the aura around their stapled pages, their cult following inspired by a determination to continually reinvent themselves and spring up in an age where print is supposedly dead. All of this really, really excites us. Increasingly, we're seeing zines being used as self-promo portfolios, as lookbooks for clothing labels, or for packing full of photos from your recent round-the-world trip. Ultimately, there are very few rules for zines. You choose the layout, and we'll print it. Let's start with what binding options you can choose from, because this defines the aesthetic of the zine and also dictates how many pages you have or maybe the number of pages dictates which binding method you can choose. Chicken and egg, egg and chicken. So if you have up to 40 pages, we'd recommend wire stitching. So wire stitching, saddle stitching, or stapling are all the same thing. The sheets are folded in half, and then two staples are applied down the left-hand side to bind the sheets together. So if we have a look at the mechanics here, a sheet is printed, both sides and folded in half, then stapled. So a sheet has four pages on it. So we class as a page um, when we come to quote as an actual page of content. So here we've got a sheet which is printed both sides and folded. So we've got a left-hand side, a right-hand side, flip it over and another left and a right, so four pages. So this explains why we quote and we say a four-page cover, because if you did go for a thicker material for the cover, the cover would have four pages, the front cover, inside front cover, inside back cover, and the back cover, making a four-page cover. So 
So you can see the mechanics here and they will get four pages per sheet. So we need a multiple of four pages for this method of binding to work as a zine. So you can choose an eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36 or 40 page zine. Four pages folded in half. So you can't have, a, for example, a 13 or a 25 page zine. 25 page zine would be 24 pages bound in and then just one page just flapping around. It doesn't work. So uh, if you want to quote for a wire stitched booklet, make sure it's a multiple of four pages. 40 pages is the maximum that we suggest for wire stitching because when you fold the sheets in half, that's 10 sheets. And we want to make sure that your zine sits as flat as possible. There's a few examples that I'm gonna show you now to illustrate this. So here we can see uh, Turves, which is a really nice zine, photography zine about greyhounds and dog training. So this is a 28 page self cover onto 170 gram uncoated. So self cover means that the entire publication, all of the sheets are printed onto the same paperweight. So all of the sheets, including the cover here, are onto 170 uncoated, 28 pages altogether, it's A5, and you can see it sits neatly on the desk. Here we have Swirl, which is a magnificent zine printed numerous times and really, really helps people with their mental health, it gives them action plans and gives them tips and advice and guidance on how to battle their mental demons. Really, really worthwhile publication. And we did print a lot of these for the children in the local area of Grenfell as well for free to try and help out with the issues that they're going through. Swirl is an A5 zine again. It has a total of 24 pages, but it's got a four page cover onto 300 gram uncoated with a matte lamination. And then it's got the inside pages onto 115 uncoated. So 300 gram for the cover, 115 for the inside pages. And you can see that the cover tends to bounce open. Paper inherently prefers to be flat. We can fold it obviously, um, but once it's folded, it does tend to try and get back to flat again. So it always bounces open. People say, oh, can you make sure that my zine is flat and it sits flat on the table? We can say yes, but unfortunately, in all honesty, it's not possible. The paper does always try and bounce a little bit. So this is 24 pages altogether, and you can see that the cover is bouncing up a little bit. Now, like I said, we do recommend 40 pages maximum, but in theory, we can go up to 72 or 76. So here is, again, the brilliant hate zine. And then this is actually 76 pages wire stitched. So this is at the absolute maximum limit possible. All the pages are onto 100 gram evolution uncoated. So 100 gram is thin, but even taking into account how thin it is, you can see with 76 pages, there's a curl in the middle. There's a lot of bounce. The inside pages you can see on the profile side here, they actually start from quite a long way away from the staples compared to the cover. So when we come to the right hand edge of hate, to make sure that the right hand edge is trimmed flush and it's straight, those inside pages are actually trim, end up being trimmed kind of three to five mil shorter than the other pages on the outer extremity of the zine. You see that, so on the left hand side, they're, they're cutting in, they start, they actually physically start from nearer the middle of the zine. So on the right hand edge, when those sheets are folded in half, we have to trim more off those pages to ensure it's flush on the outer edge. So therefore, if you've got any page numbers, so you do have to allow for the fact those pages are going to be trimmed smaller. Page numbers, always a good idea to keep at least five to 10 mil away from the page edge because of this very issue. Um, it is spoken about on our website in our wire stitching setup guide in more detail. There's illustrations on there, but this video guide hopefully has helped you understand that problem too. So that's the issue of creep, where you go for a particularly chunky wire stitch in and the inside pages are pushed out. So the fourth option we'll show you here is an A4 booklet uh, called Courtyard. And this is 16 pages in total. Because it's A4, the pages actually fall a little bit flatter, but 16 pages, again, is if you look at the side here, is really, really neat. It creates a really, really neat publication. So you come to wire stitching. Zines, old school kind of zines that you'd make on a photocopy, they would all be printed onto the same paperweight anyway. So if you wanted to go down that route, that's definitely going to create a neater bind. 
if you did want to go for a thicker cover, um, 300 gram uncoated or 300 gram silk is the kind of go-to for the cover. And then 115 uncoated or 130 silk for your inside pages. But you could definitely reduce the cover weight a little bit, make it slightly flimsier, which will enable it to sit neater on the desk. But like I say, we're not gonna lie and say it definitely won't bounce open. There is a high chance that it will do creates a bit of charm it is paper after all but having something tangible in people's hands is nicer than you just sending them a pdf so that's why stitching so realistically we say let's cap it at 40 pages we can go a lot higher but you do have to allow for creep and you have to allow for a lot of bounce if you go down that route the other option for binding is perfect binding so if we have a look at the profile of this um, perfect bound zine, you see the inside pages are trimmed into a text block, then the left hand edges are roughened up, glue is applied, and then the cover is printed as a continuous spread from the front cover around to the back. That's wrapped around the text block and glued on, and then we put a six to eight mil hinge on the front and the back cover here. So you, the cover opens nice and neatly, and in theory, it should fall flat again. So perfect binding, possibly looks more professional. It's definitely more high-end. It's a more costly process. Um, if you go for 40 pages or more, this is the route that we'd propose you go down. Um, it creates a neater bind. You don't have to worry about the bounce as much and, and the curling on the inside pages because you can see it's a very neat text block. 40 pages or more. So 40 pages will give you a three mil spine. If you go for 115 uncoated or 130 silk, but we can do this method for anything up to three or 400 pages and really chunky. The glue that we use is PUR glue, um, which is a process that makes the text pages incredibly resilient. Move on to the next point. Can we perfect bind for under 40 pages? Well, we do say no really to that because we have done it before on as low as 28 and you just don't get the thickness of the text pages to actually get enough glue to go down. And honestly, when people open the cover up and they start reading it, the pages can just pull out. There's physically not enough glue down the left-hand edge to hold the pages in and they just pull out. So let's keep perfect binding to 40 pages minimum, which is a four page cover and 36 inside pages. So because of the amount of glue that goes down, the cover itself has to be a little bit more resilient. So we say a minimum of 170 gram for the cover, anything thinner and the glue would just seep through and it wouldn't do the job. I've spoken about matte lamination on the wire stitch zines and we've touched on it again on the perfect bound zines. Um, it's a really, really good idea to laminate the front cover of your publication if you go for 170 gram or thicker because when the sheets are folded in half, the ink does have a tendency to crack. If you've got ink coverage where they're folded, the paper's made of fibres. Again, like we've mentioned, they don't like being folded. So when they do, if there's ink on there, the ink and the paper tends to crack. Lamination prevents that, so it's just an extra thin layer of film. It doesn't really alter the colour of your printing underneath it, but it just protects the fibres of the paper and means we can fold it without having any issues of cracking. If it did crack, obviously it's a front cover, it's the first thing people see, and it does look scruffy, and it does look like a bit of a mistake. So with lamination, you have the option of matte lamination, which is the most common. We've got gloss lamination here, which looks amazing. If you're going to go for a comic or a graphic novel, then your illustrations and your colours are really, really going to jump through when you've got a gloss lamination. So we've got gloss matte, we've got soft touch, which has a kind of velvet feel. Looks quite professional, maybe a little bit more corporate. I don't think old school zines would have even entertained the idea of using soft touch lamination. Or you can go for anti-scuff, which is something we probably go for once a year maybe. It's not very common at all at the moment. Uh, matte lamination is definitely the go-to. Uh, it goes well with uncoated and it goes well with silk. Not much of a sheen um, and it just feels professional. Let's move on to discussing printing a flat colour on the front cover of your zine. I'll put a graphic up now which is a collection of zines recently made by Ed Sheverton in the last year. And what marks them out immediately 
visually is the range of coloured covers. There aren't really that many paper mills who supply coloured paper which we can print onto and the ones that do, you know who you are, are really expensive and not that great for an indie press. So we recommend printing a flat colour as a background to act as a base behind your artwork and achieve the same visual appearance. So Rory Zine here has a colour plan, I think it's factory yellow front cover. But our zine here get a very, very close to that yellow, but it's actually a printed colour. Again here we've got Gut Flora, which is pink colour plan and triple cooked. We've been able to achieve a colour very, very close to that by printing. Also gives you the advantage that you can actually knock out the white areas on there and you can have a completely different graphic on the reverse of the page without having to worry about it still taking the form of the pink colour itself. So there are two solutions. What works better, in my view, when you print a flat colour is uncoated paper. So here we've got, the front cover is actually printed onto 300 gram uncoated, but we've matte laminated the outside of it to prevent the ink cracking along the spine. But it does give a slightly troubling sheen over the top of it. Um, matte finish and a slight grain of uncoated tends to lend itself much better to overall background colours. So Northwest here has a thinner 160 gram front cover and the green colour just sits better on the matte finish of uncoated than it does, I think, with the lamination over the top. So my recommendation here would probably be to go for uncoated. So if you're going to go for a self cover zine, go for 115 gram uncoated for the cover. Or if you want a thicker zine, go for 300 gram uncoated. And I would probably avoid lamination on the thinner option, just so the paper itself maintains the finish of the uncoated and the ink, the full colour ink coverage, just has slightly more grain and a slightly nicer finish than it does if you laminate over the top. Can't quite put my finger on why that is, but it just feels more like the paper is the actual colour, which is the effect we're trying to achieve here. So rather than go for an expensive colour plan or colour action or vanguard paper itself, where you are also limited to the specific number of colour choices that the paper mill supplies, colour plan you've got 50 colour choices, but if you actually printed the colour, obviously there's millions and millions of colours you can choose from, you drop it into the background on your InDesign file and use it as a base behind your artwork. So a few more technical issues to discuss in terms of the binding. Uh, so on perfect binding you can see we've got the six to eight mil cover hinge here to allow the cut the front and back cover to open up easily so this is glued to the first text page you can see here on the profile so what you need to allow for when you're creating your artwork is six mil being lost on the inside front cover here and the inside back cover here and then the first six to eight mil on the spine side of your first and last text page that is also completely obscured by where the glue is applied. So if you've got any important content on that first or last text page, realistically, let's keep it 10 to 12 mil from that side of the page so the reader doesn't really have to force the cover down. It, 10 to 12 mil will keep it a good few mil away from where the cover hinge is and it will improve legibility. I think that is everything on the binding side of zines. If you have got any more questions or any comments, do put them in the box underneath and we'll be happy to go through them. Uh, jump on the binding options page on our website or the wire stitching and perfect binding setup guides. And again, there are illustrated guides on there and more of the processes are discussed in finer detail. But I hope that all makes sense. Uh, ping us an email if you'd like to, us to answer any questions on it as well. And let's move on to what size you can do your zine. So we've already said that we're basically not going to put up any creative constraints. You make the rules, so we'll just try to go with whatever you ask. Basically, you can have any size you like from A6 portrait, which is 148 mil by 105 mil, right up to A4 portrait, which is 297 mil by 210 mil wide. You can choose any bespoke size up to A4 for no extra cost. We don't charge anything extra for bespoke sizes. If you want to go for 
270 by 200. That's a really nice size, slightly between A5 and A4. It looks really good and not as contrived as A4 does. We're certainly not going to tell you that you can't do it. So sizes, uh, let's go through uh, ones near A5. So here we can see a few examples of an A5 one here, but we'll overlay that with a couple of niche bespoke sizes. So just taking a few mil or a centimetre or so off the height or the width really makes it stand out. It just catches the reader's eye a little bit more because it's not an A size. Plenty of options between A5 and A4. They are all in one price bracket, so anything larger than A5 up to A4 will all be the same price. We'll give you full freedom there. If you want to take two centimetres off the height, a centimetre off the width, that's absolutely fine. You just prepare your artwork for that new size and we'll print it. So here we'll put an A4 publication in the background and we'll overlay it with a few other bespoke sizes so you can see what really works. Some captivating zines here, compelling sizes rather than just A4. Orange zine is A6. How to have fun is 240 by 170. The Northwest is B5, which is 250 by 176. Acid reflux is A5 and noun element to consider as a comparison is A4. So we particularly like this one here. And this one also works particularly well for a wire stitch zine, um, which is a little bit smaller than A4. Also gone for a color plan front cover. So we'll put the A5 example at the back and then we'll put a few other bespoke sizes in front of it. We particularly like this one called Grown Man Business, which is 195 mil high by 143 wide. So that's 15 mil shorter on the height and five mil shorter on the width. But you can see compared to A5, it's actually quite captivating. Just makes the reader think about it a little bit more. A size that works well between A5 and A4 is 254 by 203 millimeters, which is actually 10 by eight inches. So compared against A4, it looks a little bit more unique. Still got plenty of physical space on the page to put photography. It works for both portrait and landscape images, certainly work for illustrations, and it would work if you only had portrait images. Plenty of room on the page to get your work shown. If you also jump on the paper sizes page on our website, you can actually see the physical print sizes of some of your favorite magazines. So we've got Monocle on there, we've got Little White Lies, we've got So Young, which have been printing since inception, Creative Review. You can get an idea of what sizes the famous publications go for, and then you can copy that for your final major project or your for, or for your new publication. Um, some are more cost effective to print than others, but that's the same with anything. But if there's something on there that you like, ping us an email. Again, there are some sizes between A5 and A4, so you can print those for the same price as A4, no problem at all. I think our go-to for a zine would still be A5 size. It's uh, big enough to get some content on there. It's neat enough and compact enough for people to put in their pocket or for people to read on the way into work, take away from a shop without feeling like they're having to take their luggage with them. A4 sometimes can feel slightly unwieldy. Obviously it's a larger paper size so you can get more content on there. But A5 is nice and neat and I think that does still work well. So paper types, what can we go for here? Again, we're gonna try and give you as much freedom as possible. We're not gonna try and restrict you, but we do have a paper sample pack we can send out to you, which contains our house papers. So they're called our house papers. We keep them on the shelf ready to go at all times. The rates that we get from these on the paper mill are exceptionally good. So we've got house uncoated, silk, gloss, and we've got Evolution Uncoated, and all of them come in a range from about 100 gram, which is a flimsy paper, up to 350 gram, which is a really chunky card. So the inside pages of your zine, we can max out at 170 gram. The cover, we can max out at 350 gram. 350 can be too rigid, so we'd, te we'd, we'd tell you to limit it really at 300 gram. 350 is overkill. 
but all of the paper ranges, the silk, the gloss, the uncoated and the evolution all come in a big range of sizes that are ideal for both the inside pages and the front cover of your zine. So our house uncoated is a bright white finish. It's got no shine. It lends itself well to colour reproduction. The images sit on the paper well and they're quite vibrant. If you compare it against Evolution Uncoated, that's slightly off-white. It's got a bit of a grain. It is 100% recycled, but we will be honest, Evolution Uncoated soaks up the ink. So if you've got kind of dark images that are already lacking in contrast, if you print them onto Evolution Uncoated, the contrast is going to be muted even more. It's not great for colour reproduction, but it is 100% recycled and it is slightly off-white. So a lot of people are looking for that solution. So go to Evolution Uncoated as our house choice for that. You then have Silk. Silk's just a good middle ground paper. It's going to make your colours jump off the page. It's got a slight coating, so there's a slight sheen on there. It feels smooth. It's quite bright white as well. Comes in a good range of weights. So 130 gram is your go-to for the inside pages. 300 gram for the cover. Again, we'd recommend matte lamination. Next up is gloss. So gloss, exactly what it says on the tin. It's glossy. It's going to have a lot of shine. Gloss scenes do look really cool. We print them so rarely, probably because our website really leads people away from gloss. But if you want your images to be really bright and colourful, then look at this example here. This is a gloss zine. It does look impressive and it does look striking. So gloss, again, 130 gram for the inside pages, 300 gram gloss for the cover. You can then add gloss lamination, or you can even mix it up and go for a matte lamination, which would be quite a nice dynamic between the matte lamination on one side and the gloss card on the other. Um, so premium choices for zines. If you want to keep your costs down, stick with one of our house choices. But I know some of the universities, if you're looking to print a zine um, as part of your university course, they do have visits from GF Smith and from some of the other paper mills, and they do promote their papers. They are, we'll be honest, quite a lot more expensive, but GF Smith themselves have a range of maybe 100 to 200 different paper types, everything from kind of craft paper through to textures and coloured papers in the colour plan range. Um, we don't hold their paper samples just because there's too many of them in too many weights, but if you get in touch with samples at gfsmith.com, ping them an email and they'll send you out a swatch book. Or if you jump on their website and head to the collection page, then their collection of papers is, is highlighted on there with some really good photos, actually, of what the different ones look at. You can find photos of our house papers on our website. We have tried our absolute best to make one white paper look different to another white paper. But if there's any doubt, just get in contact with us and we'll send you out a paper sample pack they normally go out the same day, and each one contains A5 paper samples of the choices that we've just spoken about. They're all printed. Uh, there's an alphabet on one side, an XYZ alphabet on one side, so you can see how the different colours from that alphabet print on the different textures and the different paper weights, so that's really handy. And on the other side, boom, you've got yourself 15 free New York-based typography and landscape postcards. So once you're done choosing the paper, Get the old blue tack out, stick them on your wall, and it'll probably make quite a nice montage. Um, so, yeah, if you want the paper sample pack, ping us an email. We'll get one of those sent out the same day. We don't charge for them. Um, we're just keen for you to see exactly what the papers are before you go ahead and choose them for your zine. So there aren't any surprises when the zine turns up. I'd say 50% of people go for uncoated. 50% of people go for silk. Now we've mentioned gloss is quite charming but really really rare so it'd be nice to see a load of gloss zines coming through after people have watched this video guide evolution uncoated just be careful with that one because it does mute your inks so that leads us neatly onto our next point we can print one copy of your zine as a test before you go ahead with the entire order so you can see exactly what you're going to get so it's really really good for photography illustration but any kind of zines really so you send us the final artwork we book the whole order in and then we'll send you a test copy in the we'll send you out a test copy by fedex so you can look at that and then you can see how your images reproduce on the paper you've chosen 
If there's anything not quite right, you can drop the images back into Photoshop. You can adjust the levels and the brightness and the contrast, and then you can drop them back into InDesign, send us a new file, and we'll use the new file to print your final run. So we're trying to be as helpful as possible here with the test copies. We call them a hard copy proof, and we don't have any restrictions here either. If your zine is a bespoke size and it's got 40 pages, we'll print your hard copy proof of your bespoke size with your 40 pages. We're not going to have any restrictions telling you you can only print 16 pages maximum. That's absolutely ludicrous. We want you to see exactly what you're going to get on your final print run before you go ahead. So this is a great way to do it. Um, the first copy we can include for free. If you do want multiple hard copy proofs, then we do need to start charging just to cover our costs. But if you want multiple copies, that's absolutely fine. We're more than happy to do that for you. You can make different amends to the file and test it again before committing with the final print run. Depending on your subject matter, some of the paper choices are probably going to be better solutions than others. So black and white images in particular are always tricky. You either print the images in CMYK and they might end up with a green or a magenta colour cast because we are printing the black ink in four colour. So there is cyan, magenta, yellow and black ink going into making up those solids. Or you drop your images into Photoshop and convert them to grayscale. That will mean that we're only using black ink to print the images, ink going up to make the shades. Unfortunately, we are going to be pragmatic and honest here. They're never going to look the same in print as they do on screen. Your screen is probably an RGB monitor and it's backlit. Obviously, ink goes onto paper. Paper's a flat surface. It hasn't got a light behind it. But if you give somebody your zine, sell them a zine, they get, the images are going to have a charm and a tactility that they just don't have if you send them a PDF. Nobody wants to look at a PDF, do they, and smile over it. They'd rather have a zine in their hand they can flick through it, it's something to hold, something to cherish. The PDF is just a file that you can look at on screen. So while your images might not look identical to how they originally were when they were taken, they're still going to look great. And we can play with it with the hard copy proof to ensure that they do look as good as possible in print. Uh, black and white images, you probably are safer going for our house uncoated or our house silk. I would strongly avoid evolution uncoated. Um, full colour images, absolutely fine. Pick any of the paper types. We'll run a hard copy proof as a safety net so you can see exactly what you're going to get. Do allow an extra week for those and then an extra week for the final print run with a little bit of uh, wiggle room in between, maybe a day or so for you to actually digest it, look at it and make changes. So altogether, two, two and a half weeks for the whole process. If you just went ahead with a print run straight away, then we can probably get a zine back to you in three to five working days, depending on the number of pages and the number of copies you go for. Okay, so let's move on to pricing. So this is really the nuts and the bolts of it. Bottom line is, we would rather you printed with us than you didn't. Remember our mantra? We want to help you transform your ideas into print. So if we send you a quote and someone else is £20 cheaper, then do let us know. If there's a mark you need us to get to, let us know and we'll do what we can to help out. We're not naive enough to think it will be the cheapest quote on every print run. Honestly, in the whole of the world, there is always someone cheaper in every industry. I'm sure you've bought a coffee today that you could have bought cheaper within 100 yards of that cafe, but you like their service and the ambience of that particular place, so that's why you went there, right? So all of the zines that we have here, they all have a cover price of between five and 10 pounds, and they all sell out regularly and come back for second editions. So it might be that you need to print a few more copies of your particular zine to hit a unit price that means you can sell for five to 10 pounds and make some money. The more copies you print, the lower the unit price will be. So for example, it might be £30 for if you only printed one copy, but then if you print 100 copies, that exact same spec comes down to £1.50 or £2 each. So if you're buying it from us for £2 a copy and selling it for between £5 and £10, you've got potentially quite a nice margin there to be able to justify doing the project. We've touched on Kickstarter on a number of our other guides as well. It's 2020 now and it's never been easier to self-publish your work. So you can jump on Kickstarter, you can prepare a video guide on there, you can talk people through your creative idea and if they buy into it and they're excited by it, so you can have your project fully funded before you commit to going ahead. Maybe you realise that half the number of people you thought might go for it will, 
So maybe you could reduce the print run a little bit and you won't overcommit. We used to print zines back in the day where people would go for silly numbers from issue one and we'd never hear from them again. Honestly, we'd rather print 50 or 100 copies of your zine and you come back for a second print run. So let's start digging deeper into our showcase now of previous zines that we've printed and how each of those conquered the design brief of creating a stunning zine. So we're going to start here with four different A5 solutions to the zine. So I think the first thing that we're going to touch on is your decision between do you want a self cover where all the pages on the zine are printed onto the same paperweight or do you want a thicker cover? So we've got two here that are self cover and two with a thicker cover. So if we look at the thicker cover to start with, so this one here has a 300 gram uncoated cover and 115 uncoated for the inside pages. You can see that the cover does bounce open. As we spoke about earlier in the choices, we can say yes, it will definitely sit flat, but in reality, it won't. Once you open the cover of a zine, the paper tends to lend itself back to trying to flatten itself out and to sit flat again. So we can really, really squeeze this as much as possible, but it's still not gonna go flat. That's one drawback of having a thicker cover. Obviously the pro of it is it feels more substantial. People pick it up. You can probably get away with charging more for the cover price because it feels like a more substantial publication. So both of these have got a 300 gram uncoated cover, matte lamination both sides, and 115 GSM uncoated for the inside pages. So this one is 20 inside pages and swirl is 16. Ever so slight difference in the thickness there. They're both coming up about two mil thick. So uncoated, feels nice and tactile, gives a really nice finish, it's a muted finish. When people ask for a matte paper, they really mean uncoated, but it's bright white, so it does your images justice. You flip through, it's great for illustrations. The 300 gram, nice and chunky for the cover and the inside pages. Flick through really easily. So bright colors. They jump off the page still, they're slightly more muted than they would be if it was silk because it's uncoated, so the ink soaks in a little bit more, but because it's bright white, really nice finish. Lends itself really well to photography, and you've got the crisp back cover. The alternative then, as we have here, is to print all of the pages onto the same paperweight, so they're all onto 100 gram uncoated. So your standard photocopier paper that you get in the office is around 80 GSM. So 100 GSM is a slight jump up on that. 115 that we add here feels noticeably thicker. We can go as thick as 170 for the inside. So this scene here is 40 pages altogether onto 100 gram uncoated. And you can see because it's got slightly more pages, 40 in total, which is 10 sheets folded in half then stapled, that there is a slight curl in the middle, again, we're not gonna to say to you that we're gonna be able to get it to go completely flat because in reality, we won't. But it adds an extra charm to it, makes it collectible. It's, it's a tangible thing that people can sit on the tube, they can read, they can read when they get home in the evening and it's a really nice feature. Hate here is 76 inside pages. So we've said that 40 pages is pretty much the max for wire stitching, but hate gone for 76, which is the absolute limit. And you can see here the effect there, a big curl on the spine and a lot of bounce. The, it was coming up about four or five mil thick, this um, really free flowing layout on hate. So I think we're up to issue four or five now. Great for illustrations and great for photography. So this is on 100 GSM Evolution Uncoated. So Evolution Uncoated is slightly off-white as well. Um, it's 100% recycled, so it ticks that box. So if you want a 100% recycled zine, go for Evolution Uncoated. Uh, interestingly, Hate on later issues did actually step up and do Perfect Bound. This one's 120 inside pages, which is really, really too thick to wire stitch, so they had no option but to go for perfect binding. Is it slightly neater? And compare the two here. Um, one's probably four or five mil thick, and the most recent issue is seven or eight mil thick. 
So if you're gonna go for Evolution Uncoated, one thing to consider is that if you do then laminate the outer cover, it does actually make it not recyclable. So if you wanted to go for a white background on the front cover, there'll be no chance of the ink cracking, and that's a good solution for an Evolution Uncoated zine. And it does mean that when people have finished reading it, the whole thing can still be recycled. So we've got four choices here. So we've got 300 gram uncoated for the cover, which does bounce open a little bit. It does feel more premium and more substantial when people read it. Or we've got a self cover zine where all the pages are printed onto the same paper stock. On the front cover here, we've got quite a distinctive mast head. Cracking, yellow is really becoming quite a favorite color of mine. Really, really nice zine, this one. Hate has a free-flowing layout. We've got a mix of imagery and we've got text in there. I'll be slightly careful with which pages I open in this one, but hey, it is a cracking, cracking zine and it's up to issue six, I think now. Sometimes we do print zines for corporate clients as well. So this is for Adidas and Stella Sport. They wanted a zine to publicize their latest fashion range. Really nice typography. It's very stylish. Typography and images and photography both working together. Creates an impressive looking zine. And this went down really, really well at the launch of their that particular season's collection. So they're four choices for an A5 zine. Let's take a step up then and let's start looking at zines that are slightly larger than A5 up to and including A4. So at the back here we have Speed Queen and then I've overlaid three other zines which are bespoke sizes between A5 and A4 to highlight some really quite interesting and intriguing sizes that you could go for. It makes the reader's eye work a little bit because it's an unexpected size. It's quite compelling. Um, we have Speed Queen at the back here, which is A4. So that's 297 high by 210 wide. Next up we have There, 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 which is 215 wide by 270 high. So it's a couple of centimeters shy top of that we can then have a look at Flyboy by Reese Wooten and Harrison Wallace which is 270 high by 190 wide so 190 wide and then we have the jungle by Rob Pilly which is a really great photography zine depicting the jungle camp in Calais and Rob's book is 250 high by 176 wide so this is actually B5 so authentic B5 size so all four of these are the same price point. So any bespoke size larger than A5 up to and including A4 is the same price point. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of flexibility. You don't have to worry about adding an extra centimeter or so. It's gonna change the price. Anything up to 297 by 210, is gonna be the same price all the way through. It makes it easy. I don't know why you charge for bespoke sizes, but we certainly don't. So Speed Queen is a really nice photographic zine. A4 means that the double page spreads have a real wow factor. They're quite fascinating, they're captivating images. See a lot larger, two or three times larger than they are if they were A5. Allows you to have loads and loads of white space on the page and draw the reader's eye into the images. It's A4, on this particular one, we have a 200 gram uncoated cover, slightly thinner than the 300 gram before. So 200 gram would class as a thin card or a really, really thick paper. 200 gram for the cover, 115 for the inside pages. And we've got 20 pages altogether, so four plus 16 pages. Remember, it's a four page cover because onto the thicker stock is the front cover, the inside front cover the inside back cover and the back cover, making a four page cover. So four plus 16 gives you a neat bind down the spine. With it being A4, it does sit relatively flatter than the A5 one does because the weight of the cover actually pushes it down, but 200 gram uncoated also helps with that. 300 is probably the standard. We do probably put 90% of our zines onto 300 gram, but 200 just flops down a little bit neater. 
So that's Speed Queen. We've got there, there, then, which again is a really, really nice photography zine. They've actually gone for quite an off-kilter spec this time, which is 160 Evolution Uncoated for the cover. So that ticks the recycled box. You can't actually see the colour or the grain of the paper on the cover on this one because it's printed completely, but it is 100% recycled. It doesn't have lamination on there as well, so it retains its recycled aspect. The inside pages, to give the photography a vibrance, to make them more stunning and more impressive, we've gone for 170 silk for the inside pages, so the colours really jump off the page. Sensational images in this one, really, really nice photographic zine. Some of the pages have a white border around the edge. So let's just discuss the border here a little bit more detail. So here we've got a 12 to 15 mil border around the edge of the page, which is a really, really good idea. If you do a really, really tight kind of two or three mil border, and this applies for other books, postcards as well in particular, uh, if you do a two or three mil border around the edge, when we come to trim the paper, obviously if you print in 100 copies of a book, you're gonna have like 1,000, 2,000 sheets on top of each other. Paper's a natural material, there's always a little bit of movement. So if it moves by a couple of mil and your border was only three mil anyway, then it might end up being one mil on one side and five mil on the other, which then really, really looks like a mistake. So having a bigger border here, like 12 to 15 mil, just gives it a, the image a little bit of room around the edge of the page. And if there is movement when it comes to trimming, which it always tends to be, then the movement is less obvious. <laughs> end up with 13 mil at the top, 11 mil at the bottom, which is certainly better than five and one. Something to consider with the layout. But here we've got a mix of border. We've got some pages which have a, a landscape photograph on there and a larger border at the top and the bottom. And we've got some pages which are full bleed. Again, full bleed images are absolutely fine with XYZ. Um, we don't charge anything extra for your ink going right to the edge of the page. More full bleed images. So 170 GSM silk, the inside pages of this photo photographic zine. Next up, Flyboy. And like I said earlier, we really don't print that many gloss zines and gloss comics, but this is an absolute cracker. So we've got 300 GSM silk for the cover with gloss lamination. So the imagery really, really jumps off the page. It becomes the focal point. Beautiful, shiny cover, first class. When you open it up on this one, there's an intriguing contrast. We only have black ink printed throughout. So black ink on these illustrations really, really is extraordinary. It's quite striking. Flip through, the black is really, really punchy. So if you've got a black background on your artwork, you can set it up on the CMYK slider as 30% magenta, 30% yellow, 30% cyan, and 100% black. And when it comes to print, it will be a really, really jet black. If you're gonna print text, keep that as just 100% black. But for a black background, you can definitely make it really punchy. So this gloss scene is 270 high, 190 wide, which again, it's quite a fascinating size that falls between A5 and A4. It's out of the norm, gives you something extra to play with, and it's an extra additional thing that you can promote to your readers. Refugee camps around Calais, titled The Jungle. But the photo photography is impressive, it's sensational photography. And we're printed here onto 150 silk for the inside pages. 130 is the standard, so 150 is a definite step up. People say, oh, can you print it onto thicker so you can't see through it? Even if you went for 300 gram on the cover and held it up to the light, like we're doing here, you'd be able to see through. So flat on the desk, there's barely any show through. If you hold it up to the light, you are going to be able to see the image through from the other side. You would, even if you went for 170 gram, which is the max that we can staple in. So Rob's publication, like we said, is B5, so that's 250 mil high by 170 mil wide. 200 gram uncoated cover, so it flops down nicely. It sits flat and flush to the text block, and 150 gram inside for the text pages. 
We've got matte lamination over the front cover as well, which is always a good idea. If you don't have lamination on there, then the ink along the spine can and usually does crack. It's the first thing that people see. Never judge a book by its cover, they say. But if it's got scuffing on there because you didn't put lamination on there, people probably will. Eye-catching, striking and dramatic images. Photographic zines, absolute winners. Uh, you can sell them for anywhere between five and 10 pounds a copy. And this again is a bespoke size, which you can print for the same price as up to A4. So last few selections of wire stitch zines, and here we're gonna highlight again the difference in the sizes that you can go for. So Speed Queen at the back is A4. Obviously all of these are portraits, so Speed Queen is A4 portrait. And then we have the Northwest, which is B5, 250 by 176. We've got So Young, an early incarnation of So Young, which is A5, 210 by 148. And we've got Orange Zine, which is A6. So that's 148 by 105. So you can see neatly how they all fit together. Obviously the major difference is the actual physical amount of content that you can get per page, depending on the size that you go for. Um, if you're gonna go for a larger zine, you'd be able to get away with selling it for more. But then if you go for a higher number of pages and you go for something bespoke, it's something unique for the reader. And again, you can command a higher cover price. So Speed Queen at A4. We've got the Northwest, which is a photographic zine from Preston is My Paris. Twenty-four pages all together onto one fifteen uncoated. So it sits neatly together. Cover image sits flush to the page. You don't have to worry about the cover bouncing up because all the pages are onto the same paperweight. Full colour all the way through. And it just shows you here what can be achieved with zines really. There are no rules. We don't conform to any rules when we're printing zines. You can add your content and if it's engaging enough, radiant and vivid, captivating, people will go ahead and they will buy a copy. An early edition here of So Young, So Young issue eight. We're up to number 24, I think now. So originally started at A5. So this is an illustrated music zine, which has done particularly well, our longest running publication. The guys go out and they interview bands every couple of months. And this is a really, really successful zine. This particular one of So Young, again, it's got 200 gram uncoated cover and it doesn't have matte lamination on there. Slightly risky, but it looks like we've got away with it. We've got 44 inside pages, so there is a bit of bounce on there. It's pushing the limits of stapling, but it looks neat and it's handy and it does retain a zine feel. When we speak in a minute about perfect bound zines, they are a little bit more corporate looking. This is an old school zine. I guess back in the day, a lot of zines were A5 because you'd get a sheet on your college photocopy, you'd print it and fold it in half. A4 sheet folded in half makes A5. If you're worried about your images being slightly more muted or uncoated, if you go for our house uncoated, they are still bright and vivid. So young, the final one we'll look at is Orange Zine, which is a really neat A6 publication. Cover onto 300 gram uncoated. So that's chunky and 115 uncoated for the inside pages. We've got a combination here of poetry, photography, and really nice illustrations. So just a handy little zine to hand out. Might be able to sell these for kind of three to five pounds each, but if you print enough, you'll be able to get them for well under a pound, so you've still got a nice bit of wiggle room there and a bit of margin to actually reward your creativity and make some money off the back of the project. So A6, four page cover, 28 inside pages. It's got 300 gram cover, so there is a good chunk of bounce on this one. Uh, we saw the bounce earlier on A5, less so at A4, but because of how rigid A6 is, that is gonna flop open like that. Do expect it. Um, I mean, let's just try and prove by squashing this down. Let's really, really push it down. Oh, 
oh, that did help a little bit. But once the cover's opened up again, <laughs> that is an inevitable consequence of printing onto card. Let's treat you now to a little bit of a showcase on So Young magazine. So Young started from issue one and we're now at issue 24. The guys have done a brilliant job curating and putting together this scene. They'll probably be the first to admit, and I think I've heard them say on occasion before, that they didn't really know what they were doing when they first came to XYZ with issue one. That is a common theme, and it really is the reason why we're putting these video guys together. We appreciate that not many people have printed before, and it can be quite a daunting marketplace to operate in, but we'll do whatever we can to highlight the options that you have available and to talk you through the process of preparing your artwork for print. So the first few issues will show the evolution were compact A5 zines of around 44 to 52 pages. Became quite successful. It's got an iconic masthead. There's an online version and a print version which really shows how strong this is. And it shows that print isn't dead. I'm not sure what the circulation is on the online version, but we print a good few hundred copies, which is gradually increasing issue upon issue. We've been going six years now. Different color for each one is a good way to add progression through the series whilst maintaining the rapidly increasingly iconic masthead. So we reached issue 10 and issue 10 became a perfect bound special edition, A4 size. Every single issue always has a fantastic double page spread in the middle featuring the musical artists within that issue. I should say it's obviously a musical zine. I'm sure the guys are humble enough to bat this off, but I'm pretty sure they played a big part in some up and coming bands getting the exposure that they needed and then ultimately reaching the heights that they have done today. Wolf Alice on the front cover of issue 13. They are a fine example of this. I saw them support the Foo Fighters at the Olympic Stadium in London to 85, 90,000 people. So young, issue 13. And they were also on the front cover of issue 7. Gone on to win the Mercury Music Prize as well. If you haven't seen Wolf Alice play live, they are quite simply the greatest band out there at the moment. So at issue... 11 or 12, we made a step up to B5 size, so, so 250 by 176. So that's a good chunk larger than A5. Plenty more content we could squeeze in. There is a loose format for the page layout, but really the illustrations and the content dictates exactly what goes on to each page. So issue 11 through to 23 was all at B5 size. Again, continuing with a different photography, different illustration or different colour backdrop. I have noticed that there's a different cover for the online version than there is for the print version, which is quite a cool way to do it as well. It was originally given away free, but now you do buy the copies. And the most recent one, which is issue 24, which has just hit the shelves. Um, we've now started litho printing this because they've got to that print length. And we've just trimmed a little bit off the height and the width just to make this a more competitive size for printing. Get more copies into print for less obviously increase your margins still got the fantastic double page spread in the center and we're still going for uh, 200 gram uncoated for the cover and 120 gram uncoated for the inside it's a really neat zine oh, it smells magnificent as well ink on a litho press is absolutely colossal you can eat it don't eat it don't eat it so there we go so young magazine if you haven't read a copy Get yourself out there, buy the print edition or get it online. Really, really great music magazine. If you're about to print a music magazine, do get in touch with us at XYZ. Loads and loads of zines have been given birth on our presses and we want to help get you into print as well. Let's step up now to perfect bound zines. So we've got a selection here of sizes that are around A5. So we've got A5 at the back, which is Dole Hospital, Hyper Reality and No Cold Coolers. So they're all standard A5. On top of that, I've overlaid Grown Man Business and Airlift to Berlin. So Airlift to Berlin, slightly smaller than A5, and that is 200 mil high by 141 wide. And Grown Man is 143 high by 195 wide. Start with Grown Man Business. 
This is one of the earliest zines that we printed, and I've got to admit to thinking, when the artwork first came through, what on earth is this that has landed in our inbox? It was basically an eclectic mix of seemingly unrelated photography. But the more you look at it, the more captivating it gets. The photography is exceptional, and the subject matters, while seemingly not really linked, are kind of all put together on one trip around the States. So we've got full bleed images. We've got images that have got white borders around the edge. Again, this is a lovely, decent border. That's not gonna give us, give us any issues at all when it comes to trimming. Photography zines, there's no rules. You can mix it up as it works best. This is quite an eye-catching way to do it. Full bleed image on one side, smaller snapshot image on the opposite page. If you've got a little bit more room and money to play with, I guess, you can go for no image on the left. So all of the eyes drawn to the image on the right-hand side. Page numbers can be added. These are really neat page numbers, actually. They're a long, long way in. It's quite nice. Don't need to go too big for page numbers. They're only a little hint as well. So these are kind of five or six point. But it does enable people to actually refer back to the glossary and the contents at the back of the page and find out who did the images. <clears throat> so that's particularly nice. Again, as we've spoken about in the binding methods, you've got the six to eight mil hinge on the front cover of the book, which is glued to the first text page. Here we've got another photography zine. Again, nice mix, full bleed images and some images which are full width, but a landscape, so have the white border at the top and the bottom. Images should really be saved in CMYK before they're sent over. If you save the images in CMYK on your computer, it means you can play with the levels in Photoshop and make sure they're 100% spot on. If you send them over to us in RGB, we'll just batch convert them and it gives you less creative control. Our presses do print in CMYK ink, so cyan, magenta, yellow and ink. Your original photography off your camera phone or off your SLR will be in RGB. So there is always a colour conversion that needs to happen before we get it on our presses. Unfortunately, they're never going to look identical to how they do on screen or on the camera when they're printed in CMYK ink on paper, which isn't backlit and it doesn't have that bright white light. So what we can do is if you are worried about how your images are reproduced, we'll print you a hard copy proof first. So we print one copy out, we send it to you, we keep another copy back here, and then you can then drop the images back into Photoshop, you can make changes and then supply us with new artwork before we go ahead with the final print run. If you've got a 60 page zine, A5, we can print you a hard copy proof of all of that. There's no limitations, we don't say you can only print 16 pages of it. If you want to print all 60 pages of your zine before we go ahead to check how every single image prints, 100% we can do that. So that's airlift to Berlin, that's 200 mil high by 14 mil wide, and that's onto Evolution uncoated 300 gram cover and 120 gram Evolution uncoated for the inside, so 100% recycled, perfect bound. Should just say that grown man is on 300 gram uncoated for the, ins for the front cover, matte lamination to the outer to prevent the ink cracking, and the inside pages are on 130 gram silk, so the colours nice, bright and vibrant and jump off the page. Let's move on to Hyper Reality, 100, uh, 300 gram cover, 130 gram silk, so a very similar print spec, and it's got 36 inside pages. So I'd go as far as saying this is the archetypal photography zine. So we have 40 pages altogether, A5, 300 gram cover, put the inside pages on 130 silk. So the inside images are stunning, they're impressive, and they jump off the page. So the key consideration with perfect bound work is the spine gutter. So the spine gutter is the area closest to the spine on your pages. So if you look here, without really, really forcing the pages down, it's not possible to press the pages completely flat. Huge advantage that you have got with wire stitch zines is you can press the pages flat without any problem. Rub, run your hand down there and you can press them flat. So the entire width of the double page spread is visible. Whereas perfect bound zines, we do 
go into this on our file setup guides online. You do tend to lose two to three mil on the spine side of each page. So you have to allow for that if you've got images at double page spreads. You can just see here that we're starting to lose a little bit of the S from Awesome. So what you can do is cheat a little bit. You can split the image into two. You can nudge the left hand half left by two or three mil and the right hand half right by two or three mil. And it just gives the illusion that the images line up, even though on the file it will look a bit funky because there's uh, duplication through the center of the pages. Really nice zine though. So do allow for that when you come to set up your artwork. No Cold Callers by Alex Dygaard. Really thin front cover. So that sits very neatly on the page. You can see here, Hyper Reality, we've opened that up. We've just had a good look through and the cover is now bouncing up. It's probably not gonna go flat again. Whereas No Cold Callers by Alex Dygaard, it's a flimsier cover, 200 gram I think this one, and the inside pages uh, 90 gram. This is a stunning, stunning zine. Gorgeous photography, amazing typography. Every single page, look at it, every single page is a visual overload. Again, there are no rules with zines, so what you want to put on the pages is entirely up to you. Send it over and we'll print it. Great combination of fantastic typography and imagery. Very neat, this is 90 GSM for the inside pages. So the spine on this is just about coming up thicker than three mil. People often send us quote forms asking for, for example, a 16 page quote um, with perfect binding. It's just physically not possible because there won't be enough surface area down the left hand edge there for us to actually get some glue down and hold the pages in. The last thing you want to do is when somebody just bought your zine or when you've posted it out to them for the pages to actually fall out because there's not enough surface area. So this is the absolute bare minimum really. We're at kind of two and a half, three mil there. If you go down to 16 pages, it's just not gonna be thick enough. So we need really 36 inside pages, 32 inside pages, the bare minimum. So 32 inside, four page cover will get you to 36. That's just about thin enough. At the top end though, you can go as chunky as you like. This amazing illustrated book here, for Tim King. It's probably three centimeters deep. We've got one illustration for every single day of the year. Striking illustrations, brilliantly drawn. So the perfect binding glue is plenty strong enough to hold in this number of pages. Last one of the smaller A5 perfect bound zines that we're gonna look at is Dole Hospital. Dole Hospital is a mental health zine that's really, really helped people hopefully be able to comprehend and digest the issues that are going on. Combination of illustrations and impressive poetry writing and a little bit of photography as well. Brilliantly curated, so there's a good mix of poetry and illustrations. Dole Hospital has a 300 GSM uncoated cover. 115 uncoated for the inside pages so again we're going for that same spec 300 gram cover 115 for the inside pages works really well we've got 156 inside pages here so we're at about a 10 to 12 mil spine substantial zine this one lots and lots of content in turn that means that you can charge a higher cover price let's make the step up now to zines perfect bound which are between A5 and A4 size. Again, same as the wire stitch ones, you can choose any size larger than A5 up to and including A4 for the same price. So if you need to add an extra centimeter on the, the width or the height halfway through the design process, it's not going to affect the cost. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of creative freedom. So we have MOOF and we have the Bristol Germ at the back here, which are A4, 210 wide by 297. We've got Burnt Roti, in front, which is 280 
by 210, so same width, a little bit off the height. Then we have Religious Fly Review, which is 240 by 170. And we've got Shooter, which is 222 by 157. If I compare Shooter to A5, fractionally bigger, but it is in that larger price point where we could really go any size up to A4 for the same price. So Shooter, Religious Fly Review, Burnt Roti, Bristol Germ and Moof. So let's start with Moof, which is an awesome zine, an entirely flexible page layout dictated by the content. It's very much set in the late 60s, the content of this one. Black print all the way through. It is cheaper to print, print in black ink only than it is in full color. So if you do need to save a little bit off the price point when we've quoted your zine, you can come back and we're just quote printing black all the way through to help you out and save you some money. Full color cover, bit of impact. Front cover of Moof is 160 Evolution uncoated. No lamination on that. It's just about staying intact because we've got a white spine. And the inside pages are 90 GSM uncoated. So they're nice and thin, easy to turn through, lightweight. Let's move. Check out the masthead on this one as well. Bigger page size at A4 really does allow for the pages to be absolutely crammed full with content. Bristol German, it's a second A4 zine. This is a music zine highlighting the up and coming and the now very much established bands in the Bristol music scene. Brilliant read. Alistair prides himself on the fact that he doesn't have page numbers on his. So again, taking away the constraints within the zine process, no page numbers, so people don't know exactly where they are. They're just enjoying it on a page to page basis. First class imagery and text accompanying it. The text on this is particularly neat. There's a lot of content to fit in on the page, so I think we're probably around about eight point here to make sure that we can get as much content in as possible. But if you stick with quite a loose page layout, you can change it up to 10 and 12 point for those stories that have got a little bit less content. Good mix of words and illustrations and photography. Another very successful zine, this one. Burnt Roti, 280 by 210. The inside pages of this one are 100 GSM silk, so this really gives a nod to kind of your standard fashion magazine that you'd find on the shelf. But the content itself really, really marks itself out as being completely different to anything else you'd find. Gorgeous photography. 100 GSM silk for the inside pages, 200 gram for the cover. Sits neatly back onto the text block. Easy for the reader to turn. Full color images all the way through. Distinctive masthead again, and a lively mix of content inside. Neatly bound there with a five mil spine down the side. Five mil is about the cutoff for where you can start considering to put your name and your title on the edge. Five mil is probably too tight unless the title itself on the spine is really thin but then people wouldn't be able to read it anyway. If you go thicker, like we've got here on Shooter, definitely gives you the scope to add the title without it moving too close to the edge if there is a little bit of movement. So let's start with Shooter next. We're up to about issue 10 with Shooter now maybe, literary zine, so all the way through the content is fascinating poetry and written word. A really, really great zine to have a look through. Standard layout on every page. 
some of the pages mixed up with a green background just to differentiate from others. You're gonna set type on your zine. This looks to be around about nine or 10 point. 12 or 14 is what you'd be looking at for a children's book. If you want it to have a intelligent clientele, then let's go for nine or 10 points so it's not too pungent. Shooter has a 300 gram silk cover, matte lamination to the outside, and again, 115 gram uncoated for the inside pages. So that's your choice there, really. Do you want a matte finish for the inside pages at 115 gram uncoated, or do you want a silk finish? A lot of it comes down to personal preference and the subject matter you've got. You definitely wouldn't want to go for gloss if you just had text all the way through because the gloss, the shine on the paper makes the text hard to read. Silk is probably the safest choice for photography and a mix of text. Both are very legible. If you want to go for just text, the matte finish of Uncoated is a really good selection. The final one is Religious Flyer Review of the Perfect Bound Zines at the size between A5 and A4. And nothing really gets across that mantra that we spoke about earlier, that there are no conventions with zines like Religious Flyer Review. This is, as it suggests on the front cover, a zine all about religious flyers. What does happen? What does? <laughs> they may well have sold out of this. We've, we've done two print runs already. But I would strongly recommend getting a hold of this zine. It's an absolute beauty. So this is 240 high by 170 wide. We've got the front cover on 300 gram uncoated. We've got the matte lamination on the outside and we've got 60 inside pages on 115 GSM uncoated. Full color print all the way through. Perfect bound. Really works quite well this spec. It's bigger than A5 so you get the scope to add plenty of content in there without it being oversized like A4 where it can be slightly cumbersome. Very neat size, 60 inside pages. Very good, if you printed enough copies, we could get this down to point kind of two, three pounds per copy, which allows you to sell it for five to 10 pounds and make a good margin. So that's our perfect bound zines between the A5 and A4 size. Some exceptional, extraordinary and out of this world publications there. Do recommend jumping on the websites. I'm sure a quick Google search you'll be able to find out where to buy these from. Again, most of these do have case studies on our website, so jump on there and you can get the print spec, but we did try and portray that as we went through as well. Before we finish the showcase section of this guide, let's blast through a few more really, really iconic and cracking zines that we've printed over the years. XYZ first started in 2006, so we've been going 14 years now printed loads and loads of brilliant zines. Here are a few more. So Sidewalk Magazine, we have printed a phenomenal amount of skate, skater photography and skate zines. And this is up there with the best. Sidewalk, if you're a skater, you know exactly who they are. They went off at the start of January, bitterly cold UK, and decided to take pictures of skateboarding by the beach, obviously. So this has led to some seriously impressive first class photography. It's really hard to take a bad photo with a beautiful blue sky of a skateboarder, a snowboarder or somebody on skis. We've got awesome little graphics in the corner. Oh, tasty. Better 99 with a flake, even tastes good in January, doesn't it? All of the seaside ports around the UK, some brilliant skateboarding photography. I think it's got a 170 gram front cover and 130 gram for the inside. So a nice, neat, flimsy zine with around 40 pages. Silk finish all the way through. Next up is Chaos Theory, which is a zine about the iconic Hollywood film star from movies such as Jurassic Park. Jeff Goldblum makes the most of a loose, relaxed grid, bright colors, no particular page layout. You make the rules. 
illustrations all the way through, text on there as well, neatly fitting within the A5 page. We've got probably a 200 gram cover, matte lamination on the outside, and 100 or 115 GSM for the inside pages. It just shows you that zines really, really do lend themselves brilliantly to illustration, photography, and the written word. We Make London is a brilliant corporate zine that we've just done for the Science Museum. This showcases an exhibition that they've just recently had in February 2020. Again, a loose guide enables the illustrations and the students' work to jump off the page. Photography in there as well, really well designed by Raw Ground Arts. It's got a 300 GSM uncoated cover, I think. Matte lamination to the outside, 115 for the inside pages. Classic, classic zine print spec. A5, two staples down the spine. Very, very neat. Intrepid zine brings together an impressive selection of photography taken from around the world using cameras from the Intrepid zine shop, using cameras from the Intrepid camera shop in Brighton. Sensational photography. A lively mix of text and photos as we flick through this one. Look at the skies on here. Wowzers. I have a five or six mil spine, just about thick enough to get the title on there. But as you can see, there has been some movement. So the title has ended up nearer the back cover than the front cover. If you put small text on there and it moves slightly, then this is going to become an issue. So we do recommend at least five mil before you consider putting your title and your issue number and your content down the spine. We have full color illustrations in here and we have black and white illustrations. If you're printing black and white photography, it's always best to get a hard copy proof first so you can easily see exactly how your images are going to print onto paper in comparison with how they look on screen. Some of the images have a neat white board around the edge. Others are full bleed, mix and match, keeps the reader guessing as he goes through. I mean, Hard to know what to say about this one, apart from it's pretty much perfection. It's a little neat A6 zine, absolutely packed with pages full of typography and signage overlaid of each other, Photoshop layers here, things placed on top of each other. Absolutely gorgeous zine, A6 inside. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10. We've got 20 pages all together, each spread, is sensational, really, really makes you want to keep flicking through it. I bet you could read this a hundred times and every single time you'd notice something different. Absolutely no constraints on the page layout at all with this one. The entire double page spread is filled with full color graphics. It oozes brilliance. We really, really like this one. So a little handy little A6 zine, A5 folded in half, stapled twice. Really, really gorgeous. The penultimate scene we'll talk about is one from Sophia. He's a very, very talented illustrator. And this is probably how people used to make zines back in the day. So you get a single sheet of A4 paper, you put a double width slit through the center, fold it in half, jumps up like that, and then you end up with an eight page zine made out of one sheet, no need for staples. You can print these as well. There's a little bit of hand folding involved or we could just send them to you as an A4 sheet, and then you get the fun part, which is doing the slit through the middle and folding the pages and folding it back down to size. Auntie Fatima, printed onto pink color action paper, I think this one, black print single-sided. Old school method of making zines. 
folds down to A7 in size from an A4. Last but not least is the brilliant A5 zine depicting Wolf Alice's 2016 My Love Is Cool Tour in spring around the UK. Photography by the brilliant John O'White, impressive, sensational photography of the band out there on tour. My Love Is Cool is an absolute belter of an album. Check out Bros, Freezy and Fluffy, all mega, mega tracks. Followed up in 2018 by uh, Visions of a Life, which went on to win the Mercury Music Prize. Absolutely justified. If you've ever seen this band live, they literally tear the roof off the building they're playing in. They don't tear the roof off the building. They're not builders. They literally blow the roof off the building they're playing in. The music is absolutely massive. They're only a four piece. Strongly recommend them. They are destined for greatness. If they don't headline Glastonbury this year, it is literally only a matter of time. This is an A5 zine, getting back to the matter in hand. I think we've got about 60 pages, all printed onto it. Must be 100 or 115 GSM uncoated. So it's a neat old school style zine. If you're going out on tour with your mate's band or you're going out on tour with a band on your own, we've printed these similar zines for quite a few up and coming and established bands now. And they do work really, really well. It's something you can sell on the merch stand at the end of a gig, five to 10 pound a copy as an extra revenue stream. Sell it online as well to your fans so they've got a memento rather than a glossy over corporate program. Why not print them a zine? Brilliant band, brilliant zine this one. Love printing it. As the zine format becomes more popular, we're also being approached by a lot of actual corporate businesses who would like to print a zine to promote themselves. So here's a few examples of those. So we've got the London Short Film Festival programme for 2020, and their programme has taken the format of a zine, self-cover, pages open easily. We have the name of the film at the top and some text underneath but it forms a really, really neat publication. Saddle stitch down the side, side. I think we've got 56 to 60 pages on this one. Self cover all the way through. The BBC Sport approached us. They've got a slightly thicker front cover. I think they've got 200 gram or 250 gram here. 130 silk all the way through, but again, a neat zine format to promote the creative work they're doing at BBC Sport. We Make London is a cool little zine we've just printed recently in conjunction with the design agency Raw Ground Arts. This is for a science museum exhibition. Again, they wanted a zine format. It appealed more to the demographic of the children and the youths that they've been working with on this project. So 300 gram for the front cover, matte lamination. So it's quite a, quite a good solution for a zine. And the final one here is Adidas and Stella Sport. So a lookbook for their recent collection as well. They went for a zine format. This is A4, all the pages onto the same paperweight, which I believe is 100 GSM. So the pages are nice and flimsy. They open all the way through. Two staples down the spine to bind it together. Glorious full color images all the way through. Punchy typography. And this was a big hit. I think the launch party was at Topshop on Oxford Street. Large number of industry types there. And these zines actually really worked very well. Before we finish, we're going to blast our way through loads of different sectors and how publications within those sectors have answered the calling of the DIY mag and the independent zine. So let's start with the music sector. So music zines. Classic, iconic magazine, so young, now up to issue 24. The spoke size between A5 and A4, and a combination of brilliant illustrations and accompanying text about each of the bands. Wire stitched, 44 pages altogether. Gorgeous illustrations, great content, an impressive zine. The Bristol Germ, an A4 perfect bound zine. No page numbers to guide the reader because they don't want people to be constrained by jumping to a specific page. They'd rather you read all of the pages. 
Again, radiant, striking imagery and accompanying text about the bands. We've got interviews with the bands, A4 pages, I mean there's loads of room for content. Matte lamination on the front cover, a neat three or four mil spine, uncoated pages throughout. Emma Viola, who is a brilliant music photographer. This is her zine, The Issue, Rat Boy on the front cover, gloss lamination, silk all the way through the inside pages. Impressive photography, really given room to breathe. This is 290 by 210. So if you're a sports photographer, a music photographer, you're going out on the road with some bands, what a brilliant way that when you've finished a three or six month tour following a band around, bring all of your favorite images together into a zine and print it up. If the band that you've been following has got a following themselves, then all of their fans are gonna come on and want to find out what they've been up to on the road. These are the snapshot images that you don't see when you turn up at one gig. Backstage photography and the band being themselves, this is what the fans are gonna to want to see anywhere between sort of five to 20 pounds, I'm sure that you could sell these zines for. So these are music zines, three classic examples, So Young, The Bristol Germ, and The Issue. Skate zines, yes, we'd print skate zines all day, every day if we could. Here's three examples. So we've got Lines, which is a neat A5 skate zine, 300 GSM front cover, 115 for the inside pages, and this is depicting skating in Palestine. So we've got a lot of editorial content mixed up with illustration and skate photography. Great typography, given room to breathe on the page. The type doesn't always have to be massive and fill the whole page. Probably has more impact if it's got white space around it. Lost Art is a skate zine in conjunction with Nike skateboarding. Full bleed, punchy, faded black and white images all the way through. Impressive, they're giving prominence on the page. Skate photography, as we've already spoken about, is out of this world. Mix and match, put multiple images on the page, overlay it with, a page, with an image in the background. A little bit of text on there, it's Carson-esque text. And even more Carson-esque is Same Old Zine, which is a fantastic skateboarding magazine slash book. Over 100 pages on this one, so we've got a big chunky spine, full colour print throughout, and each page is like a montage of stunning illustration, text and photography. First class zine, this one. So that's perfect band with the matte lamination on the spine. We've got Lost Art with Nike skateboarding, which is a wire stitch zine. And we've got lines depicting the skateboarding movement in Palestine, which is again a neat A5 wire stitch zine. If you want an illustrator, get your work into print and go for a zine format. Three examples here. Illustrations given prominence on the page. They enunciate the story. They help guide the reader through. Great for infographics. Children's books slash zine, this one. These could be the best days of our lives. Stunning full colour illustrations. Charmingly arranged on the page with a little bit of text opposite, again to guide the reader through. And Shell Suit Zombie, which is a zine for the creative market to help creatives decide what they're gonna do after they finish university. High-end illustrations on these. Uncoated paper, so the illustrations sit flat on the matte surface. A5 perfect bound, A5 wire stitch, A5 wire stitch. We've got a matte lamination on the front cover and we've got gloss lamination. Really, really gonna try and push gloss lamination now over the, over the next few months. Typographic 
and text heavy zines. These three could not be more different. So we have Shooter Literary Magazine, where each issue takes on a different topic. This is Cities. So we have neatly arranged text following a specific format showcases the poetry and the creative writing of a number of writers intermingled with full colour pages to act as a bed behind the creative writing perfect bound neat spine with enough room for the title and the name of the magazine down the spine then we've got no cold callers wow look at this this is an absolute overload no rules for zines, no rules for this typography and imagery within this one. Love this one, 90 GSM inside pages. This is what you can achieve with type. Loads and loads of layers of type over the top of each other. Carson-esque, so like ray gun, repetition, fonts. Kind of leans towards just one color print all the way through with just the red and the white, which is also quite engaging. There are images and photography mixed in there too. Very 70s style typeface. And again, very similar Photoshop layers, type overlaid on top of each other, consistent colors per page. Really, really nice this. Do check out David Carson and Ray Gun if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you have, it's incredibly iconic. This definitely has a nod to that. So it's a very neat, compact A6 wire stitch zine. We've got an A5 perfect bound zine with 40 inside pages onto 90 gram uncoated. And then we've got slightly larger 222 by 157. So a mid size between A5 and A4. We've got 112 inside pages onto 115 uncoated. We've got a 300 gram silk card cover with matte lamination to the outside. All three of these are very, very unique, and very individual ways of solving a typographic zine. Photographic zine printing at XYZ. Here we've picked out five great solutions to photographic zines, each one a different size. These four all bespoke sizes between A5 and A4. We don't charge extra for bespoke sizes. Optimism here is a standard A5 zine. Let's start with that one. So we've got 300 gram for the cover, 115 for the inside pages. Spectacular photography all the way through. Illustrations overlaid on photography. Jutting shapes across the page to avoid cliches. A5 wire stitch zine. How to be fun. The images are the big winner on this one. Combination of full, some full bleed images and then varying white borders around the pages. Very loose layout style. 240 by 170 color plan front cover black text on the front cover, but we can print yellow very, very similar to this for significantly less. The Northwest, a B5 size, 250 by 176. Folded bleed images all the way through. We stack that on there. Topographies, again, spectacular, stunning images on this one. Back the photography that you've taken all of these are kind of follow a similar style where they, the photographer's gone away to one specific location and then created a zine this one's about madrid so it's about geographic land masses what better way to promote your work than by bringing it together into a zine so 170 silk for the inside pages on this one absolutely stunning Buenvenido a Madrid, again, another bespoke size between A5 and A4. Sensational images, unique.
very, very little type, but you don't need the type when the images are telling the story. So these are photographic zines printed at XYZ. Get in touch when yours is ready to go ahead and we can't wait to see your artwork. Wow, so that was our definitive guide to zine printing. That was a monster, right? I hope it gave you loads of ideas on what can be achieved and gave you plenty of inspiration to start putting together your next piece of work. In 2020, how do you get your work noticed? You print it. The internet might be all shiny and aluminium coated, but it still can't compete with the joy of having something tangible in your hand, flicking through it, laughing at it, before putting it back in your satchel and continuing your day with an extra spring in your step. Our aim is to get the idea from your brain and into print. So we've showed the options you have available when it comes to choosing the paper spec, the number of pages, paper choice, and size for your next zine. Dissected into its simplest form, the zine is a creative booklet. And we've showcased that the format really does work for a huge range of diverse applications from illustrators, photography, typography, graphic novels, plus all manner of activist, riot, and LBGT content. Your zine, your rules. The advantage of printing with XYZ compared with producing a zine at home, hopefully is obvious by now. Our printing and binding is not only high end, but also will be significantly cheaper and quicker per zine, so you can get you more copies out there for less. If there is a print spec that you've seen during this guide and you like, then drop the details into our quote form online or send us an email direct. We don't advertise our prices online just because we prefer to open up a conversation with you, find out a little bit about the project. Your artwork is unique and bespoke, so in turn, we'll provide you with a unique and bespoke quote. You don't really want to be looking at a boring spreadsheet online to work out how much your zine's going to cost. And at the same time, after all the creative effort you've put into making your zine as perfect as possible, do you really now want to just upload it to somebody's website and keep your fingers crossed that what turns up is perfect? When you send the files over to XYZ, there are a number of pre-flight checks that we'll carry out. If something doesn't look like it's set up perfectly for print, we'll come back to you and flag it up beforehand. This can take a few extra days, so do allow those within your schedule. If you do have any further questions, ping us an email on hello at xyz.co.uk or if it's in office hours, call us on 01206 766647. If you'd like a paper sample pack to be sent out to help you choose papers and finishes and weights, then again, there's a form on our website or email us directly with your address. We normally send them out the same afternoon. Ultimately, there is no better feeling than when a glorious stack of boxes arrives at your house or your work and you unpack them and there it is, your first zine, your zine, the zine that you worked hard on, you designed and you self-published. Enjoy the feel and the smell of it. You worked really hard for this moment. We hope you enjoyed our zine printing guide. We tried to make it as comprehensive and helpful as possible. So we look forward to seeing your artwork and helping you transform your ideas into print.